The last class of hydrocarbons that we have to talk about are alkynes. And alkynes, just like alkanes and alkenes, are hydrocarbons, meaning that they're made out of carbon chains with hydrogens attached. But now, they contain one or more carbon-carbon triple bonds. If they are triply bonded between two carbons, that means that they don't share one or two pairs of electrons. They share three pairs of electrons, meaning that these bonds are now very, very strong. So now, if we compare alkynes to alkanes and alkenes, we have to remember that alkanes were considered to be saturated. They had the maximum number of hydrogen atoms attached to the carbons available. As a result, they ended up with a general formula Cn H2n plus 2. So if you took the number of carbons and doubled it and then added 2, that would give you the number of hydrogens bonded in the chain. Alkenes had a double bond between two of the carbons. As a result, they had less than the maximum amount, and that means that they are unsaturated, giving them the general formula CnH2n. Now, let's look at alkynes. Alkynes have a triple bond. Again, because they have a triple bond, they have less than the maximum number of hydrogens attached, and they must be unsaturated. Now what we see is they have the general formula CnH2n minus 2. Unlike alkanes, which end in an ane, and alkenes, which end in an ene, alkynes are designated by the ending yne. So let's look at this example. Just like when we named alkanes, the, it's important that the longest possible carbon chain must contain the multiple bonds. So in this particular case, we're going to choose this longest chain. The chain has three carbons in it, so we know that this is a prop. And because it contains a triple bond, this is a propine. Now we have two choices in terms of numbering. I can number from the left, giving the lowest possible number to the chlorine, going one, two, three, or I can start numbering on the right and give the lowest possible number to the alkyne, to the triple bond. The triple bond is the most important functional group possible in an alkyne, so we must start numbering from the right. So I go one, two, three. So this happens to be one propine to say because it starts on the first carbon in the chain. I realize that it goes between the first and the second, but it starts on the first carbon. This also has a chloro group. So I put chloro, and that chloro group is found on the third carbon in the chain. So this is three chloro, one propine. The last thing we have to do is go back and fill in our dashes and commas. Numbers and letters can't touch, and they have to be separated by a dash. So we put three dashes in, making this three chloro, one propine. The other thing I want to talk about is cycloalkanes. And an alkane, remember, has only single bonds between it, but if it's a cyclic group, we end up having a, a chain which doesn't end. So you have two hydrogen atoms fewer than in an open chain because our, there is no terminal carbon to have three bonds between uh, carbon and hydrogen. And they are named using the prefix cyclo before the name of the alkane to show that it is a cyclic compound. So when we look at the structural formulas for cycloalkanes, they're usually represented by geometric figures. And at the points of each geometric figure, you can imagine there to be a carbon. If it doesn't draw anything else in around those points, we know that the uh, remaining bonds are taken up by hydrogens. So this carbon, which has one bond to another carbon, a second bond to another carbon, must have two hydrogens coming off. This carbon has two because it's got two taken up by the other carbon bonds, and this again must have two. This would be cyclopropane because it's a three carbon chain but in a cyclic arrangement. The second example being cyclobutane because we have a four carbon chain again in a continuous loop. Cyclopentane, five carbons in the chain.
and cyclohexane, six carbons in the chain. Consider, can you have a cycloethane? Well, no. It's impossible to have a cyclic loop between two individual atoms. So we can have uh, very, very large cyclic uh, molecules, but the smallest possible cyclic alkane is uh, the cyclopropane. At this point, you're prepared and ready to complete section 9.7 out of your self-directed note section.